Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Many school teachers work under different supervision during the summer months than they do in the regular school terms. But not so Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High Summer School. No, our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, is very much a part of the deal. As he puts it... It doesn't matter what time of the year it is, Madison High is my baby. (laughs) And to prove it, he holds it up by the heels and slaps it all summer. (laughs) It isn't that Mr. Conklin's always in a bad humor. Why, there are minutes at a time when he stops frothing at the mouth and... The lightning that plays about his head subsides, leaving just a few glowing coals nestled in his mustache. (laughs) Last Thursday morning at breakfast, I was discussing his latest diabolical device with my landlady, Mrs. Davis. He calls it the Conklin Carelessness Code, Mrs. Davis. What in the world is that, Connie? Well, it's a list of petty offenses for which the faculty and students may be fined. Of course, these fines are purely voluntary. Voluntary? Yes, like income taxes. <laughs> the fines all go into a fund which will be used to buy a brand new statue for the library. What kind of a statue? A statue of the man whom Osgood Conklin admires and respects more than anyone else in the world. Who's that? Who else? Osgood Conklin. <laughs> you see, when he first thought of the idea, he put a receptacle in the hall for donations marked Osgood Conklin Bust. At the end of the day, he found six notes in it reading, You said it. (laughs) That's what gave him the idea for the carelessness code. Leave it to Osgood. You don't have to leave it. He takes it. (laughs) What bothers me most, though, is the way he takes it. Every time he catches somebody committing one of the offenses, which he makes up as he goes along, he rattles a tin can and says, Feed the kitty, feed the kitty. (laughs) Has he caught you yet, Connie? Has he? I've fed the kitty so often, I feel like a tall mouse (laughs) Take last Tuesday, for instance I happened to run into Mr. Boynton in the hall Well, I just didn't happen to run into him I sort of aimed myself at him (laughs) But just as my favorite biologist and I greeted each other The bell rang for the next period And Mr. Conklin came by and fined me a dime For not being in my classroom That is strict That's nothing Wednesday, I hit a parlay I had to donate 15 cents because I went up a stairway marked down (laughs) 20 cents for loitering near a fire exit (laughs) You can call having your foot caught in the door loitering (laughs) Connie, do you have to submit to all these fines? I mean, has Mr. Conklin the right to do all this? We voted on it in assembly Of course, it was really more like a plebiscite. You know, vote yes any way you want to. (laughs) It isn't the money I miss so much. It's the lunches I could have bought with it. Imagine it. Not having enough money for lunch. I don't have to imagine it. Those fines add up, you know. You poor dear. It has been an expensive week for you, hasn't it? Yes, and that's what worries me so much today. I haven't got a dime in my purse. He can get me on a vagrancy rap. (laughs) Oh, well, maybe it's for the best. The less I have on me, the less I can donate to the bust. uh, For the bust. (laughs) Well, I had a good breakfast anyway. I'd better get ready to leave now. Walter Denton's picking me up any minute. But where's your car, Connie? At the tailor's, Mrs. Davis. The tailor's? Don't you mean the garage, Connie? No, I'm having it pressed. The last time I drove it in traffic, I got it all wrinkled. (laughs) I'm glad you called for me promptly today, Walter. The Conklin Code provides a stiff fine for tardiness. Believe me, Miss Brooks, my punctuality was not inspired by purely altruistic motives. Uh, By that, I mean I, too, have been harpooned by our beloved principal. I'm glad you explained it. (laughs) Miss Brooks, I don't like the way things are going at Madison High. We've got to take some steps. 
What? And get fined for stealing school property? No. No, I'm serious. This Conklin Code is nothing but medieval tyranny. Why, yesterday he fined me 15 cents for whistling outside of his office. A downright injustice. Why, weren't you whistling? Well, sure I was whistling, but I didn't know he was in his office. <laughs> I was just trying to get Harriet's attention. She was down at the end of the hall. Besides, I think the fine was exorbitant. All I gave was a two-finger job. <laughs> a two-finger job? You mean where you put two fingers in your mouth and then blast? Yeah, that's the one. Fifteen cents he soaked me. I've heard that whistle, Walter And in all honesty, I must confess That I consider seven and a half cents a finger Very reasonable <laughs> But the entire code is founded on injustice and Miss Brooks, I've talked it over With the other kids at school And we've appointed you our leader Me? You are the logical member of the faculty To cross swords with Mr. Conklin Oh, now wait a minute, Walter I've crossed swords with Mr. Conklin Often enough to know that all you can get out of it Is a bent sword <laughs> But you can't avoid this responsibility, Miss Brooks We've got to fight fire with fire You are the knight we have chosen To slay the dragon I'm sorry, Walter But my card in the Dragon Slayer's Union expired <laughs> Besides, the bust is supposed to be finished by tomorrow. But how do we know there's enough in the kitty to pay for it? I don't... Oh, here's a school. <laughs> Did I stop too suddenly for you? Not at all. I always like to kiss the windshield goodbye. <laughs> Before I let you out, I'd like to ask another favor, Miss Brooks. Would you please hold this 40 cents for me? 40 cents? Yeah, it's my lunch money, and I don't want to have it on me in case Mr. Conklin finds me for breaking some rule he makes up right after I've broken it. <laughs> uh, just put it in your purse for me, will you? All right, Walter. Added to what I've got in there now, it totals one broken watch crystal and 40 cents. <laughs> I'll find a place to park. You go on in, Miss Brooks. All right, Walter. Thanks for the lift. Maybe I'd better tiptoe past Mr. Conklin's office. Squeaky shoes, 20 cents. Oh, but... <laughs> Come on, Miss Brooks. Feed the kitty, feed the kitty. Please, Mr. Conklin, we've got to talk this thing over. Very well. Would you like to step into my office? Thank you. No. Now, uh, wouldn't you like to sit down? Yes, I would. I thought you would. That'll be ten cents for not going straight to your first class. Now, <laughs> oh, come on, Miss Brooks. Feed the kitty. Feed the kitty. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Mr. Conklin. Many of the students are getting a little tired of your carelessness code. Oh? Is this insubordination? About a nickel's worth, yes. <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Miss Brooks. Don't you realize where this money is going? Yes, Mr. Conklin. It's going into a statue. Not just a statue, Miss Brooks. Rather, the statue, which will serve as an inspiration to unborn generations of Madison High students. Then why not let them pay for it? <laughs> I mean, just where are you going to put this statue, Mr. Conklin? Why, in the school library, of course, on that lovely mahogany pedestal that overlooks the entrance. You mean next to the bust of Julius Caesar? Instead of it, Miss Brooks. That's a pretty big job, summer replacement for Julius Caesar. <laughs> uh, where are you going to put the other statue? Before the Board of Education takes their next inventory, Caesar may meet with an accident. It's possible. He met with one before. <laughs> no, I meant the statue, Miss Brooks. Who knows? Inadvertently, it might be severely damaged. Why, Mr. Conklin, you're not thinking Not of... out loud, I'm not, no. Oh, uh, before I forget, Miss Brooks, I want you to straighten out the records in the library at once. Walter Denton's been acting as school librarian for the past few weeks, and needless to say, he's made a mess of everything. But, Mr. Conklin, my regular school duties are quite oh, enough Oh, this to... won't interfere with your school duties, Miss Brooks. I hereby grant you permission to attend to this matter after school hours. <laughs> Why, Mr. Conklin, how charming of you. But about this carelessness code... Oh, thanks for reminding me. You owe me 30 cents. Feed the kitty. But I haven't got any money, Mr. Conklin. Please, Miss Brooks. 
I distinctly heard your purse rattle when you sat down. Oh, well, I might as well add embezzling to my other crimes. Here you are, Mr. Conklin. But, Miss Brooks, I only asked for 30 cents. You put 40 in the kitty. Hang on to it, Mr. Conklin. I'll try my best to earn another fine before the day is out. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Here's wonderful news, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful news. Now there's something thrillingly new in Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather. Yes, something thrillingly new. Palmolive's famous beauty lather now brings you new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Millions of women will prefer beauty lather Palmolive over all other leading toilet soaps the minute they try it. For Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather now has a new, clean, flower-fresh fragrance for new allure, new charm. So, ladies, forget all other beauty care and use palm olive soap the way doctors advised for a lovelier complexion. Just stop improper cleansing and instead wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day, massaging palm olive's wonderful beauty lather onto your skin for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. That's all. All types of skin, young, older, oily, respond to it quickly. Don't wait another day to try Palm Olive's Beauty Lather. You'll be thrilled by its new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Thrilled again by the fresher, brighter complexion doctors prove may soon be yours. For new loveliness all over, use big bath-sized Palm Olive in tub or shower. <laughs> It has always been my experience that nothing stimulates the appetite quite as much as an empty pocketbook. It was with this poignant thought in mind that I approached the cafeteria at lunchtime. As I strolled slowly down the long line of tempting morsels on the steam table, Harriet Conklin, who was helping out behind the counter, came over to me. Can I serve you something, Miss Brooks? No, thank you. Just smelling. <laughs> Finished serving. Now I'm going to have my lunch. I've got it all ready on this tray here. Here to join me? All right, Harriet. I'll have some water and a napkin. <laughs> here we are. Gosh, this roast beef looks yummy. It certainly is. Did you have it with the barbecue sauce on it today? No, I smelled it plain today. <laughs> See, I'm on sort of a diet, Harriet. I don't know why you have to diet. Golly, I wish I had your figure. So do I. You could feed it better. <laughs> uh, how is the beef with that barbecue sauce on it? Delicious. Would you like a taste, Miss Brooks? Well... Oh, I... I'm sorry. If you're on a diet, I better not tempt you. <laughs> tempt me, tempt me. No. I don't know. I know how difficult it is sometimes to stay on a diet. Put some of that meat on this fork or I'll spear it from here. <laughs> there. Oh. Mm, that is good. Of course. To me, roast beef is good with or without barbecue sauce. Oh, to me, too. Really? I am one schoolteacher who offers proof positive. Pass some over without the sauce. <laughs> Here you are, Miss Brooks. Say, that is good meat. I'm certainly glad our cafeteria is staying open during summer school. Not many of them do, you know. I know. Funny thing about tasting roast beef plain, you forget how it tasted with the barbecue sauce on it. Why, Miss you don't really want another... Ruff, ruff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you are. Golly, Miss Brooks, one would think you hadn't had any lunch all week. One would be on the right track. <laughs> I don't like to mention this while you're eating, Harriet, but it's all because of your father. His carelessness code has kept me broke. I'm against it too, Miss Brooks. Daddy even finds me every chance he gets. Well, there isn't anything we can do about it, I guess. You know, there's something about that barbecue sauce that escapes me. I think I'll just try... Why, Harriet. What's the matter, Miss Brooks? You've gone south with our roast beef. <laughs> I'm sorry I ate it all so rapidly. I was starved. Say, isn't that Mr. Boynton over by the steam table? Yes, it is. When it comes to food, the bashful biologist isn't very bashful. He's getting himself a tray full, all right. And he's coming this way, Miss Brooks. Oh, don't just sit there, girl. Make room for those groceries. Hello, Miss 
Brooks, Harriet. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Would you like to join us? Well, if there's room enough, I... I... Oh, there's plenty of room. Harriet was just leaving. But I... Go get some milk, dear. It'll make you strong. (laughs) Then you can wolf down some more roast beef tomorrow. (laughs) I guess I would like some milk at that. See you later, Mr. Boynton. Bye, Miss Brooks. And so a new partnership starts. Ah, I see we have lamb chops today. (laughs) Yes, there are certain vitamins found in lamb that enhance almost any type of balanced diet. So I've heard. But before you eat them, Mr. Boynton, I wonder if you'd mind cutting off what you want and leaving the bones. I saw a puppy on the way to school this morning who looked very hungry. I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, but it's sort of a priority on these bones. My frog, McDougal, likes to nibble on them. McDougal? Yes. Extraordinary, isn't it? He's the only frog I know of who can nibble on a lamp chop bone. That's not so extraordinary. I know a girl who could nibble on a frog right now. (laughs) You'll bring Mac into the cafeteria. I'll show you the girl. (laughs) Oh, there you go. Kidding me again. (laughs) 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 What a sense of humor. (laughs) Oh, yes. Hunger is a scream. (laughs) Maybe I'd better drop one more subtle hint. Mr. Boynton? Yes? I'm starving, Mr. Boynton. (laughs) Yes. Why don't you eat something? (laughs) I'm against all these diets women inflict upon themselves. Suppose you are a little plump. (laughs) He may never get to that second lamb chop. (laughs) Mr. Boynton, I'm talking about today, now, lunch. I haven't eaten any because I don't have the money to buy any. You don't? No. Well, where is all your money? I'm land poor. <laughs> land poor? If the Conklin carelessness code continues, I'll land in the poor house. <laughs> Look, Mr. Boynton, I never borrow money if I can help it, uh, I but... know you don't, Miss Brooks, and I think that's one of your most admirable traits. Well, many's a time I've been tempted to offer you some financial assistance, but well, I've always said to myself, don't you dare, Boynton. Miss Brooks is proud. Proud and resourceful. (laughs) Yes, she'll come through. Somehow. That's what you said to yourself, huh? Yes, indeed. You've got to be more careful who you talk to. (laughs) Mr. Boynton, it's getting pretty close to the end of the lunch period. I'd like just a small bite, so that's all I'll put on you. (laughs) I mean, could you lend me 25 cents? 25 cents? Why, of course, Miss Brooks... Here you are. Thanks. I'll pay you back just as soon as oh, I... Oh, don't worry about paying me back. Gosh. Any time tonight will do. <laughs> tonight? Have we got a date for tonight? Oh, didn't I tell you? I've got tickets for the band concert on the mall. I thought we'd spend the afternoon in the park and then have some dinner and dance and take in the concert. How does that sound to you? All this and two bits, too? (laughs) Oh, it sounds wonderful, Mr. Boynton. I'll just get a sandwich or something and come right back to the table. All right, Miss Brooks. I'd better hurry. It's almost the the end of the lunch period. So it is, Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin. And if memory serves, you were supposed to be straightening out the library records after lunch. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Conklin, but I've got an important engagement I'd like to keep this afternoon. It isn't always what we'd like to do that matters, Miss Brooks. You uh, volunteered to work in the library, and that's where you'll have to spend the afternoon. But, Mr. Conklin... Unfortunately, while you were standing here chattering, you've incurred another fine for tardiness. Tardiness? Uh, That'll be 25 cents, Miss Brooks. (laughs) Feed the kitty, feed the kitty. I'm afraid I didn't keep these library cards very neatly, Miss Brooks. They're pretty thoroughly scrambled. If I had some ketchup, I'd have them for lunch. (laughs) Let's see here. These cards really are scrambled. What does this cryptic entry mean? The Three Musketeers, Alexandra Dumas or Mike Shaughnessy? Oh, The Three Musketeers is the title of a book. Yes, I know, Walter. But underneath the title, why did you write Alexandra Dumas or Mike Shaughnessy? Well, frankly, Miss Brooks, I was a little confused. You see... I couldn't remember whether Alexander Dumas wrote the book and Shaughnessy took it out or if Shaughnessy wrote it and Dumas... Believe me, Walter, if Dumas took it out, this library isn't for me. Now, you'd better let me straighten these cards out myself. You find something else to do. Okay, Miss Brooks. 
I'll grab a rag and dust off old Marblehead. Old Marblehead? Yeah, that's what we call the statue of Caesar, because his head's made out of marble. Of course, even though Mr. Conklin's head isn't made out of marble, we also call him... Yes, I know. <laughs> you needn't bother dusting off this old marble head. Somebody else in school is planning to dust it off permanently. In fact, Caesar may meet with an accident almost any time now. Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss Brooks. Well, what do you know? The Ides of March. <laughs> Uh, these uh, floors are quite slippery. A person could very easily lose his balance and be... Oh, well. oh gosh. He accidentally knocked over old Conklin, Mr. Marblehead. I mean... <laughs> Quiet, Denton. What a shocking misfortune. Why, I love this statue of Caesar with his delicately chiseled features, his fine Roman nose. You better learn to love him without his nose. It just rolled under the desk. <laughs> Here, Walter, help me lift Caesar back on the pedestal. Uh, no, 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 please. It was my clumsiness that knocked it off. I'll lift it back on myself. Well, steady does it. Good firm grip now. Walter. Yes, Miss Brooks? Set Caesar up in the next alley. Mr. Conklin's got another shot coming. <laughs> I, uh, I dropped in to inform you, Miss Brooks, that thanks to your last contribution, my statue has been paid for in full. It will be delivered tomorrow morning and unveiled at noon. I shall want it kept under cover and... Denton, what are you stuffing into that canvas bag? The things that are Caesar's, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> His ears and nose and also the rest of him. I figured I could take it over to the shop and patch it up a little and... Just leave it where it is, Denton. You see, Miss Brooks, we have only the one pedestal. Haven't we just? And uh, since Julius has been so brutally damaged... Oh, he won't be damaged anymore, Mr. Conklin. I'll see to that. This statue is school property, and if anyone tries to injure it in any way, I'll report him to the student council and the board of education. <laughs> <laughs> Zealous little beagle, isn't he? <laughs> Denton, you are dismissed as of right now. Mr. Conklin, shouldn't I... Go, boy! <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, boy. <laughs> now then, Miss Brooks, if you'll excuse me, I'll return in just a little while and personally take care of fixing that statue. Yes, I know you will, Mr. Conklin, but good. <laughs> Pardon me, Miss Brooks, but where shall I put this statue? Statue? Oh, just put it on the desk here for now. There. Well, if it isn't old Marblehead II. Yeah, it's a pretty good likeness of Mr. Conklin, isn't it? If you like Mr. Conklin's likeness, yes. <laughs> but this wasn't supposed to be delivered until tomorrow. Uh, I know, but the custodian just told me that they wanted to surprise Mr. Conklin. Is there any place we could uh, hide it temporarily? Hide it? Why, yes, there is a place we could hide it, Mr. Boynton. Right in this canvas bag. First, you'll have to take out this busted bust. All right. <laughs> there. Well, that's Julius Caesar. Say, his nose is off and his ear. Please, Mr. Boynton, there's no time to cut up touches with Julius. Now slip Mr. Conklin's statue into the bag. All right. There he goes. Now, what do we do with Caesar? We'll take him over to the shop and fix him up the best we can. He's just got to occupy that pedestal, Mr. Boynton. Pedestal? But I don't understand, Miss Brooks. Well, I'll explain it to you on the way over. You see, Mr. Conklin assigned me to work in this library, and if I'm going to look at a statue all day, I'd like to make very certain that it's the kind of a statue... <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Brooks? Miss Brooks? Uh, hmm, must have stepped out for a moment. So much the better. Ah, yes, here's the canvas bag with old Marblehead still in it. <laughs> now we'll just take this little hammer and commence. <laughs> Friends, Romans, countrymen, I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. Mr. Conklin, what are you doing? It should be obvious, even to you, Miss Brooks. Yes. Well, Mr. Conklin, there's something I feel I should tell you. Very well, Miss Brooks. But while you're telling me, I'll continue with the business at hand. It's like this, Mr. Conklin. I would normally be very loath to interrupt what's so obviously such a joyful hobby to you. But I feel that what I have to tell you merits your immediate attention. <laughs> well, well, 
What is it, Miss Brooks? If it were something trivial, like being disgruntled over having to work in the library instead of going on a date with Mr. Boynton, who is now in the park by himself, I might hesitate to bother you. Uh, what are you driving at, Miss Brooks? Well, the main point I'd like to get across to you, Mr. Conklin, is that I have absolutely no hard feelings toward you, and I trust you have none toward me. None whatsoever? Good. <laughs> now, open the bag. Open the bag? Yes, Mr. Conklin. I'm afraid you'll find that you've pulverized the wrong statue. You see, your statue arrived earlier, and we wanted to surprise you, so we put it in that bag. What? I'm in here. <laughs> and Caesar is over at the shop getting his nose put back on. But, Miss Brooks, you just stood there. All the time I was hammering you. How? Why didn't you? You should have done something. You... Please. You... Conklin, remember your blood pressure. But what'll I do? What'll I do when the Board of Education comes to take inventory? What'll I put on that pedestal? Calm down, Mr. Conklin. I just found out that it'll only cost $15 to repair the bust of Caesar. $15? Yes, and I thought of a delightful way to collect the money. Really? How, Miss Brooks? Feed the kitty, Mr. Conklin. Feed the kitty. <laughs> Brooks returns in just a moment, but first, tonight, yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Luster Cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' exclusive blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid, Luster Cream leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable, even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed. And Luster Cream leaves no soapy film, does not dry hair. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, for soft, glamorous, caressable hair, try Luster Cream Shampoo at all drug and cosmetic counters. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, I finally escaped from the library and hastened to meet Mr. Boynton in the park. Having had no lunch except a few swatches from Harriet's roast beef, I was ravenous. Hello, Miss Brooks. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it is. How about a hot dog or a hamburger? Oh, no, thanks. I'm full. <laughs> oh. Look, look at that little boy. He just threw a peanut to that pigeon. So he did. Excuse me, Mr. Boynton. Uh, Miss Brooks, you, you're not going to pick up that peanut. Certainly not, Mr. Boynton. That wouldn't be fair to the pigeon. I'm going to race him for it. <laughs> Tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palmolive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Here's a money saving offer, men a giant tube and large tube of palm olive brushless shaving cream for 49 cents. Yes, a 70 cent value for only 49 cents. This offer is made solely to prove you, too, can get smoother, more comfortable shaves the palm olive brushless way. Just follow directions on the tube and treat your face to wonderful shaves. Yes, for extra shaving comfort at extra low cost, don't miss this palm olive brushless bargain. At drug and toilet goods counters, get both giant and large size palm olive brushless, a 70 cent value for only 49 cents. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>